And Ceres yeah. has the capacity because the main thing with it is to do a good job for helping people. Ceres has the capacity to have children and to work in addition, to do both. Whereas Vesta has to do such a good job and is so uh, extremely, in, has this extreme need to do something well that if very often a person with a strong Vesta will do an either or. They will just have children and then they will work or they will just work and not have children. And they seem to, uh, there's the tendency when Vesta is really prominent to feel I can't spread myself too thin, I wouldn't do justice to it all so I have to do just this to do it really right. But we could probably, if we look at Vesta in some places, we could find an area of life where somebody's denied. Very denied. often. Very often. It tends to be a natural ascetic, a natural touch-me-not. That's the touch-me-not side of Virgo, which is one side of Virgo, definitely. Don't get too close. I'm busy with my work. Don't distract me. Do you find anything, has anybody ever find anything about nuns? And yes. I, I, in the cases I've had, the prominent Vesta is absolutely typical for celibacy, including involuntary celibacy, including um, impotence. Mm -hmm. uh, just to give one example, a, a woman who's married to an alcoholic, who's out, through his alcoholism he has become impotent. He has Vesta in the fifth house, which is the house of sex. She has Vesta in the seventh house, and she's married to him. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? Another case, uh, this man had his progressed midheaven going over Vesta in the 11th house. And I saw him shortly after the aspect had ended, and a year or so later. And uh, I was still checking, what do these things mean? I said, uh, you know, what happened uh, one to three years ago? Did you change in any way in your handling of, of your life situation? And I didn't give him any clues. I said, just, just, did you do anything different during that two-year period? And he said, yeah. That was really strange. For absolutely no reason that I could could, could determine, I, I became celibate for two years. And I don't know even now why I did it. I just did it. Mm -hmm. And then and I'm, I've stopped now, you know. But I was celibate for two years. And uh, another case was, uh, this, I was telling these stories, and this kid popped up at this convention. He's, he looked like a 17-year-old, but he was actually in his middle 20s. And uh, he says, oh, I want to see where Vesta is in my chart, because I was celibate until I was 19 years old. <laughs> and I said, is that unusual? And he said, yeah, that's unusual now. <laughs> and... Uh, and I said, well, I have found it associated with, you know, really religious conviction, celibacy for religious conviction, that sort of thing. And he says, yeah, I was thinking of becoming a monk. And it turned out during that late teen period, the p three years prior to, to his uh, uh, changing his mind, he had progressed best to going over to Midheaven for about four years in there, from roughly 13 to, from 15 to 19. In there, he had, did have best on the Midheaven. And... Uh, Another case was um, a Vesta series conjunction in the 11th house. And uh, this woman had, uh, some of these are in my asteroid ephemeris in the introduction, some of these cases. In the space of a few years, she had had two children and given them up for adoption. And uh, then her husband divorced her and got custody of the other two kids, claiming she was an unfit mother because she gave these kids up for <coughs> adoption. And she had done it at his pressure. He had pressured her into doing it. And uh, so it was a real incredible case. But the series thing, have the children, the best of thing, no, no, give them away. Don't deal with them. And uh, another case, when I mentioned that in a lecture, this woman came to me for a private chart the next day, and she said, I want to know where Vesta was two years ago. And I said, okay, well, look. And it was it, it'd been on her midheaven. She said, I knew it after that you told that story because she said, I had a child and I gave it up for adoption and I left my husband and got divorced and let him take custody of the other child. And, um, so I've seen it a great many times where strong Vesta periods is like an alienation from people. <coughs> like letting people go, putting them out of the life or having them leave, be taken away. Whether we do it consciously or unconsciously, we just we allow it to happen. I have here a, a chart that has a Venus Vesta conjunction, very tight conjunction in the eighth. Mm -hmm. Anytime Vesta's in the relationship houses, it takes care in handling. 
That's fourth, fifth, seventh, and eighth. It, there can be problems in relationships. And remember, the two reasons are either the critical potential, where you look for flaws and are not satisfied. You turn that into a job instead of just something you didn't enjoy. And of course, if you project it, you pick out someone else who does it to you. It isn't necessarily you're going to do it. You may pick someone else out as a critic. And then the other danger is that either one of the two in the relationship will get so caught up in their work that they neglect the relationship. And the other person feels neglected. You know, well, you, you live for your work and you don't yeah, pay any attention really to me. This person too. Really so either one of those can happen. They don't <coughs> have to happen. The solution is, the, one of the best solutions is to work together. Not necessarily the main job, because that can be too much togetherness. But have a project, a hobby, a side interest, where you accomplish something together to do the VESTA work accomplishment thing jointly, and that draws you together instead of separating you. I knew one very successful couple I knew that had it, the VESTA there. They each had their own job, but they bought old houses and remodeled them together. And another very successful couple with, with VESTA over there, they had both had this incredible collection of cancer, emphasis in cancer in the chart, and they took in foster children. They'd raised three kids of their own, and they, they had about 20 foster children they'd raised over the years. And uh, that was a, the job, a project that they did together. Both just real super parents. So it doesn't have to be negative, but you have to watch it. It can play hob with relationships if you're not careful. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, well, the tenth house is a good place for it because it's work oriented, and the tenth house is career status, so that's not a problem. That just means that you want to run your own work. You want to be the executive in your work and not work under somebody. What happens when Juno's uh, one degree conjunct test? Same thing as Vesta in the seventh or eighth house. You've got to watch it with relationships. The danger of uh, either turning it into a job and being one of them being too critical, or the job interfering with the relationship. The job being so important, the relationship gets neglected. How about Juno and Pallas? Okay, Juno and Pallas are the marriage asteroids, and the partnership asteroids. But Juno is marriage really intense, close emotional caring relationships. And Pallas is, Pallas is